Look at my cat, my cat is amazing, give it a lick. <laughs> Hello and welcome again to the Weekly Marmot. My name is Laura and I'll be your host this evening. Alright, a couple things to get through real quick. First of all, just a real quick reminder that this week is the opening of the Crimson Halls in Ice Crown Citadel. Uh, inside you'll find two new bosses, which are the Blood Princes and also uh, Blood Queen Lanathel. Now keep in mind that when a new wing opens, we also get five more attempts to spend on the wing end bosses. That's Putricide and Blood Queen Lanathel, and later on it'll be Syndragosa and the Lich King also. Um, those are shared between all the bosses, so if you're still working on Putricide, uh, you'll have five more attempts to be able to kill him next week, but then you won't have any left over for Lanathel. Uh, if you killed Putricide and no attempts at all, you just get him down on the first try, then awesome, you've got 15 left to kill Blood Queen Lanathel. Also, just the way that the instance is laid out, it doesn't look like you have to kill Putricide to be able to go into the Crimson Hall, so everybody's going to get access to the Blood Prince's encounter no matter how many attempts it takes you to kill Putricide. I'm expecting Blood Queen Lanathel to be a little bit more difficult than Putricide, so you'll probably still want to go kill him first, but, you know, you can just ignore him if you really, really want to and go work on Lanathel instead. Alright, let's move on. This is the only sentence I'm going to say about add-ons all week. I got a lot of comments about the uh, guitar case sitting in the back there, so I thought I'd show it to you real quick. This is uh, my guitar. It's a, um, well, it's black. Um, it's got strings on it. Those are usually important. Uh, no, actually, it's a uh, Epiphone Model Special. I don't know what that means. I'm um, assuming it just means it was cheap. I actually bought it for about $150 off of my brother a long time ago because he had it and he didn't want it. Um, I have another one, which is a nice red tradition that I spent a good deal more money on, uh, but it, along with my amp and the rest of my music equipment, is actually over at my friend's house right now, so I can't really show that to you. Um, but, yeah, this is the one that's been sitting behind me. Maybe I'll try and grab the rest of it at some point and show it to you. Alright, one more thing. One of our authors has started working on a really, really ambitious project, and he needs your help getting it off the ground. Uh, this is going to be a full-length feature film documentary called The Raid. It's going to be about raiding, uh, the people who raid, uh, all the, the drama and politics and just everything that goes into running a raiding guild and a raiding team uh, and actually killing bosses and everything. So it, it sounds like it's going to be a really, really cool film when it's completed, but like I said, he needs some help. So if that's something you're interested with, then check the link in the movie details. It'll take you right to his Kickstarter page that has all sorts of details on it. Or if you want, just click um, here. All right, now that all that's out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so after the last couple episodes, a lot of you have written in and said things along the lines of, okay, well, that's great and all, but what do I do when it's not my fault? I mean, I'm not a raid leader, and I'm a freaking fantastic raider. Why is it my fault if the guys in charge are douchebags? Well, friend, this episode's for you. Now, before we get into everything that you need to take to the people in charge, let's, um take a step or two backwards first. A lot of times, especially in guilds that you haven't been with for a terribly long amount of time, the problem actually started before you even joined the guild. Despite how things may seem, guild structures are actually very, very complex, and there's a lot you need to know about a guild before you join it. It's not just as simple as AKGS DPS DKLFG or What time do the epics drop? Each and every guild is different, and it's very easy to take some of the simpler things for granted. I mean, you're talking about a group of people that you're going to spend a lot of time with and maybe even spend real money to get to spend that time with them. So you're going to want to be as sure as possible before you make the switch that the guild you're joining is the one you're looking for. Here's a few things that tend to be overlooked. Number one, loot. Even if loot isn't a high priority for you, you're still going to want to know every little detail about the loot system that you can before you join. I'm a pretty strong believer that anyone who says they just completely don't care about loot whatsoever is completely full of crap. Even aside from all the times that I've heard, I don't normally care about loot, but there's still, I mean, loot is an important part of improving your character, and improving your character and your performance is a huge part of being a good raider, so if you absolutely don't care about loot, you're probably not very good. Now, that's not to say that everybody needs to be a dick, and that's not to say that you raid for the loot. I mean, lots of people raid just because they enjoy killing bosses, but loot's part of that, so it's something you do have to at least keep in mind. Number two, invites. When do they go out? Who does them? Who gets priority? These are all sorts of little important details you need to know. 
Aside from that, you want to be absolutely sure of the position that you're applying for when you're joining the guild. Uh, if it's just a backup position, you're probably not going to get invited terribly often, so you shouldn't feel too bad when you join a guild as a backup raider and then never get brought to anything. I mean, think about it. If you're looking to join the guild and start raiding right away full-time, then you're going to want to make sure that that's what you're getting yourself into. If you don't, and then you get sad all the time, well, that's your own damn fault. Number three, and what I personally consider to be one of the most important things to make sure of, is the guild's atmosphere. This is the uncomfortable question that usually just ends up being a polite way to say, are you guys assholes? More importantly, is that what you're looking for? One thing I always like to do when I have new people looking to join the guild is I like to have them sit in on a raid and just kind of listen to how we run things, the kind of stuff that we just randomly talk about in between trash pulls and that sort of thing, and then also what happens, you know, when things don't go so well. You really don't want to drop $25 and transfer servers to another guild and then just find out that during trash clears they just talk about butts all the time. Unless, I guess, you just really like talking about butts. Now a lot of the time you can get a pretty good idea of what the guild's going to be like just by talking to whoever it is that's going to recruit you. But, you know, if you're, if you're worried about it or if you, you know, you're not completely sure yet, then just ask them if you can sit in on a raid. Who knows? Just as a side note, one thing you absolutely never want to do is join a guild doing something that you really don't want to do in the hopes of eventually being able to switch to your off-spec or make your alt your main or any other such nonsense. Generally speaking, if someone says they're recruiting a specific class or role, it's because they need someone of that specific class or role and not the other one. And believe me, there is nothing more annoying than having that awesome new healer you just recruited all of a sudden say, well, I don't want to heal anymore, I'd rather DPS instead. And obviously, be sure to ask any other questions of things that are terribly important to you. Uh, like, do you do, you do ten mans? Uh, how do you feel about bringing alts to your raids, if that's important to you? I don't know. Uh, maybe you just really, really hate raiding with gnomes, and, I mean, who can blame you? But you want to ask that sort of thing. I'm, I'm just kidding about the gnomes thing. I think they make fantastic soccer balls. Now, I know this might sound like a whole lot of work for just a video game, but believe me, you're going to enjoy yourself a lot more if you keep yourself from having too many surprises later on. But all of that doesn't really answer the question, does it? At this point, you don't really want to know, what should I have done three months ago? You want to know, what am I supposed to do now? And even then, all the questions in the world don't guarantee that nothing's ever going to go wrong once you're actually in the guild. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is narrow down and define your problem as much as possible. Figure out exactly what it is that's bothering you. And not only does this help you, you know, prepare yourself for when you go and talk to somebody, it also helps you make sure that you're not blowing things too out of proportion when you do. Say, for example, that some guy who shows up to three out of every ten raids is getting loot before you and you don't really feel that's fair. Now if you go to your guild master and say, you know, I don't really feel like our current loot system is rewarding attendance as much as it should, that would be something that, you know, might be at least worth considering. If, however, you come up to him and say, Oh my god, everything is so terrible, I don't understand it, why would you give him loot of all people? Ah, this whole loot system is flawed! Well, he might not be very receptive. People are just generally more responsive to people that approach them with problems when they're presented in a calm and polite manner. So, you know, I mean, you're trying to get something out of him, so be nice about it. Now, if he doesn't give you an answer that you're particularly happy with, or at least, you know, give you a good reasoning as to why he feels the way he does, then there's a couple other steps you can take. If there's any other officers you can talk to about it, try talking to them. Maybe they can give you a little bit different perspective on it, or, you know, just see what they think. Uh, or you can try talking to other guild members. I mean, maybe you're just crazy. Sometimes, however, it's just a matter of a difference of opinion, and at that point, you kind of got a choice to make. You need to ask yourself, how important is this particular issue to me, and is it important enough that I would want to leave the guild over it? If it's no big deal, then it's no big deal. Everybody's different, different people have different opinions on things, you know, sometimes there's just disagreements and whatever. If it's an absolute deal breaker for you though, then alright, you know, it didn't work out, doesn't always work out, it just happens. Maybe you need to start looking for someplace else to go. Just, you know, make sure you ask some more questions this time. Alright, well, that's about all I got for this week. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.